you got your Bibles, wave them at me if you got a Bible. Boy, it's a great crowd tonight. Go to Jude chapter number 1, Jude 1, and 1 Timothy chapter number 3. I will go back to 1 Timothy uh, in just a moment, uh, but I want you to go to Jude uh, verses 1 through 3 and 1 Timothy 3, 15. Uh, I, I realized something. I'm going to preach a series starting tonight, and I probably, Chad, am going to end up on the clip. You know what I mean, don't you? The clip, Twitter clip. Yes. Now you got it. Yeah, I'm going to get on the clip, okay? And I'll, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You'll know in a minute. And uh, I can't help it, I'm going to. See, there's a lot of haters out there that hate our movement. Somebody help me preach. And they're on social media, and I, 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 honestly, I'm going out, and I'm not going after them tonight. I really, I, they go after me, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do likewise. Somebody help me preach. But uh, before I preach, I do want to say this. My wife will say more next Sunday, how much I appreciate the church and how you cared for us. Uh, it was great service today. I was so thankful for my son and my son-in-law that did a eulogy today. I, I thought James done got called to preach today. I really did. And uh, it was a wonderful service, and you were so good. And uh, the food was wonderful. Um, I OD'd on uh, meatballs, chicken, salad, green beans, corn, pound cake. Did I say meatloaf? So if I'm a little stuffy and a little... Uh, Look a little bloated, it's, that's the reason. Yeah, I am rolls, I am real butter. And if you eat margarine, you need to get right with God. Jude, uh, those on live stream, please share this. I want the whole world to hear it, even though I'm going to get some ridicule on me. You go ahead and share it. Y'all tonight, when you get out here, share it especially in the next few weeks when I really get into this. I'm going to cut some of my beginning off that I was going to do so I can get to the heart of what I want to preach on. But I want you to look at Jude, uh, verses 1 through 3, then I'll bounce over to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. You'll go there tonight with me. But let's look what Jude says. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Now, if you know anything about the book of Jude, Jude was the half-brother of the Lord Jesus. But he didn't want to admit it. He didn't want to brag about it. He said, I'm a servant. Boy, I wish you could get in our minds tonight. The greatest thing we can do is to be servants for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Now, I had some introduction about those verses, and I won't spend so much time on it. Mercy unto you and peace, and love be multiplied. Beloved, now notice what he said in verse 3. Uh, here's where I'm going to bounce into it right now. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Now, his purpose in writing the book of Jude originally was to write about our common salvation. What he was going to do, brag about Jesus, and talk about all of the elements of salvation. But notice what he said. It, is, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So what? Let me illustrate it like this. Here's what he was doing. He was talking about salvation. And I want to tell you, you ought to raise your hand if you're saved and say, I'm glad I'm saved and I'm not going to hell and I'm going to heaven and it's the best life I can ever live. Amen. 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 But I, I remember an illustration. Years ago, I saw six boys in the state of Washington that was competing to go to the Olympic trials and a 100-yard dash. Their goal was to outdo the others. 
Chad, they got on the starting line and they went about 50 meters. When one of the boys fell to the ground. Now the goal was to win. But when the other five saw the one falling on the ground, they changed their message. And they went back and all five of them carried that wounded warrior across the line and the judges had so many tears in their eyes they could not know who won. In other words, they changed. So what Jude is doing in this passage of Scripture, he's getting ready to preach about salvation and then he said, ladies and gentlemen, it is needful for me and needful for you that we should contend for the faith. That word needful is stress or pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been pastor of your church for almost 43 years, and I've never had more pressure on me tonight than I've, uh, now than I ever had before. I've got pressure on me. That's not just the pressure of pastoring. That's a lot of pressure. But I want you to know, here's, what, here's the dilemma us preachers have. On one side, we've got to preach Christ and get everybody saved we can. But because the battle is so thick, we're in a war. And what we're in a war is with is false doctrine. And some of you would like for me every Sunday preach on salvation or this or that. But the fact is, some of us need to take a stand tonight and say, our doctrine, our salvation is worth fighting for. Now, I'm trying to slow down because I'm speeding up too much. Then he said, earnestly contend. That means fighting. I don't like to fight. I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's Marguerite. But we are in a struggle. And we earnestly contend for the faith. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the traditional faith that was passed from one generation to the next generation. And I want all you to know, we're just one generation away from apostasy. The church is just one generation from falling off a map. Good preaching. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, if I go a few minutes over, don't get, don't get anxious. It's just, I, I may, I'll try not to, but I may. In my life, Joe, and Lois, you've been around 69 years, so <laughs> you had a daddy to preach what I preach. He was a fundamental Baptist. There's always been four issues, major issues, that I have fought for in 48 years. Number one, why are we Baptists? Number two, and I won't get these in any specific order, the battle of the Bible. Number three, Calvinism. And number four, dispensational or interpreting Bible in light of dispensational uh, and uh, teaching and uh, a literal dispensational teaching. Somebody help me preach. That's been the, you know what? I know y'all see the battle right now on social media in these areas, but don't think it's new. Don't, don't think it's new. They changed the words. Uh, they don't call them Calvinists now. They call them Reformed theology or, or we preach the doctrines of grace. No, 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 no. Let's just cut it to the chase. They're still Calvinists. Come on now, help me preach. I'm, pre I'm going to come, son. I, I feel a little preach coming on me right now. And, and, and by the way, I, I know, I know, I know there's a lot of folks that have fallen away from our Baptist teachings. And they're out. And they're gone. And uh, boy, for whatever reason, I, 
I really know, I think we're really doing it right because we wouldn't have so much opposition in this world if we wasn't doing it right. Amen. I mean, they got, they got one group called the Recovering IFB. Well, I'm not recovering from anything. They may have bad taste in their mouth over IFB, and, and I know some rotten IFB, and I'll mention that in a little bit. But to be quite honest with you, I'm not recovering from anything. I'm still what I've always been. And then, I didn't know this. Chad Yalton, this shouldn't have ever told me this. I've got a complex now. But they've got, did you know this? You've probably been on there. IFB Clips on Twitter. Now, I know all my members are going to go to that tonight and check it. And what they do is this. When a guy like me gets up and preaches and maybe says something controversial or, or has an illustration funny or something maybe stupid I do, they cut away from all the other, put that little clip on, and play it. I don't know if y'all know this. The boys told me. Andrew told me, so I believe it. Do you know they made fun of our pulpit? I think it's a pretty pulpit. It came on Noah's Ark, but it's still pretty. I mean, let me, let me say something to them. I'm not mad at you. Go ahead and put me on tonight. I don't care. It must smell good. Uh, but honestly, don't you have more time to try to keep people out of hell and more time you ought to spend trying to preach the gospel and more time you ought to love the hurting. Why do we want to take time up to ridicule anybody? Somebody, somebody help me preach. So tonight, here's what I'm going to preach on. Man, I'm spending a lot of time on introduction. Here's what I'm going to preach on. Why I am an independent fundamental Baptist. That's what I'm going to preach on tonight. Um, I, I want to say this. I'm going to go on the record. I am not an IFB apologist. There's a lot of skunks in our movement. There's a lot of scoundrels in our movement. There's legals in our movement. There's shysters in our movement. And there's some bad people in our movement that I don't even want to be around. There's some rude, crude, ugly people yes, sir. in our movement. Yeah. Now turn to First Timothy 3. Let me read that to you. I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me. And verse number 15. And I'll give you something else here in a minute. But if I tarry long, Paul said, that thou mayest know how do thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Truth matters. How many believe truth matters? It matters above emotion. It matters above opinion. It matters above preference. It matters above culture. When I speak of a pillar, I'm talking about an undergirding for the truth. The church is the undergirder for the truth. Our job is to hold up truth. Somebody help me preach. We're not a massage parlor for the community. We're not a karaoke, a karaoke, whatever you call that stage, for wannabe singers. We're not a place for someone not worthy to lead. We're not a social club. We're a pillar. And I'm going to ask the question, is the kind of church you have really important? Hey, man. Somebody, I'm coming. I really am. I, I know I'm going slow right now. Now, I'm going to start like this. I, I'm, I'm on why I'm an independent Baptist church. Tays Valley Baptist Church is an independent, fundamental Baptist church. Now listen to this. Not because we flipped a coin. Not because Pastor Smith's the pastor. Not, not because of certain standards, actually. Not because we use hymn books 
or because we're against everything. Oh, I'm preaching. Come on now. Now, I want to say this to you. I'm an independent Baptist, but that doesn't mean I don't think there's other churches that have people love God. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in other churches that might not be some sincere people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm an independent Baptist church because it's the closest to the Bible and it's the truth and it's the kind you ought to be a member of. Amen. Now, listen uh, to this illustration. I know there's some bad apples, Lois. Let me ask you something. Because there's bad doctors, are you going to diss doctors? No, you're going to find a good one. It's not the practice of doctors that sometimes gets bad. It's the practicers. Oh, I'm preaching. I'm going there. Y'all get ready. I'm, I'm going to lay the whole load on you tonight, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take those three words, and I'll be done in a moment. Independent, fundamental, Baptist. And I'm going to tell you what we believe and why I am one. Number one, the word independent. And I, boy, I'm going to give you a deep definition. It means not dependent. <laughs> deep, boy. Or not subordinate. We don't answer to a convention. We don't spend our money and some of it go to terrorist outfits. We're not governed by an association. I'm preaching. Amen. I tell you what, we're governed by the Bible. Amen. We're led by a pastor. Amen. And we vote on our decisions in the local body. Good preaching, Reverend. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me preach. Now, I want you all, all to know, we govern our church church according to the Bible, but I want to be honest with you, I don't meddle in what other ch local Baptist churches do. It's none of my business. Yeah. If they want to have bake sales, yard sales, auctions, and everything else, go ahead and do it. I don't give a flip. Right. But that's not what an independent Baptist church is. Independent Baptist church has one head. Yeah. We're just independent. Right. Ain't nobody tells us what to do. I'm not going to get a call tomorrow from some association chief and say, hey, you were off limits in your preaching. No. I might get a few bad church members, a few mad church members, and a few of you liberals in the church after me. Come on. But I've had that my whole ministry. See, we're independent because we're self-governed. Now, by the way, the early church was independent. They didn't have any conventions. They didn't have any unions. They didn't, somebody help me preach. They didn't have a group of people running them. The local church run itself. Oh, that's good preaching. Now, hold a minute. I don't think there's a person in this room can come to me and say, the early church was an independent. You can't say it because they voted on matters. They let the Bible be their guide. Somebody help me preach. And they were led by a pastor. Yes. Right. Boy, it's quiet in here now. Yes. Yet we got people who hate our movement. Yes. We got people that are attacking us every day. And listen, I want y'all to know something. Go ahead and attack me. Don't attack me over foolishness. I'm a gentleman. I don't, I'm not a rough rouser. I'm not out for a fight. I'm just an independent Baptist. Because the church should be self-governed. Right. Am I preaching? Amen. Number two. Uh, I'm an independent, listen to this, fundamentalist. Now listen carefully. Now, what does that mean? In some quarters, here's what it means. Well, you spank your kids, and you vote Republican, and you're in and out of scandals, and you've got dead music, and all you're in for is the money. That's what they think of fundamentals. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's as far away from the truth as it can be. Hey, preacher, you know what a fundamentalist is? Now, some of you boys, how many basketball players we got here? Now, some of you old-timers, how many of you as you old-timers used to play basketball back in the other century? Okay? You remember when the NBA was the Michael Jordan NBA and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird? and When they butt bloodied each other's nose and they wasn't a bunch of whips, wimps. Remember? It's changed, okay? We got the prima donnas in there. We got the LeBron Jameses and, you know, a little, uh, a little butterfly. And, and, you know, if I get hit on the finger, they'll squeal. But I will tell you, the NBA has changed, right? Yep. But hold it. Hold it. The fundamentals hadn't. If those guys in the NBA today are going to be successful, they, can, they need to know how to throw a chest pass. They need to know how to throw a bounce pass. They need to know how to shoot a foul shot. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. They'll never be any good unless they have the fundamentals. Ask them. They work on them all the time. Somebody help me preach. So what do you mean by fundamentalist? Not all that junk, other junk. Here's what I mean. There's five major fundamentals that we believe in. Are y'all all still with me? First of all, we believe in the deity of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was what? God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we bear help the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I want you to know Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and he was God the Son. Yes, amen. I believe in the deity of Christ. Amen. That's a fundamental. Amen. Then secondly, the virgin birth. Amen. By the way, how many of y'all agree it's a big deal? See, sin was brought in by one man. And we were shaping in iniquity. And in sin did our mother conceive us. And the only way out of sin is for precious blood to be shed. Amen. And it couldn't be the blood of bulls and goats. And it couldn't be the blood of human beings because he had sin in them. But God, the Holy Spirit, conceived Jesus in the womb of Mary. And she birthed him just like you were birthed. And you said, what, what's the big deal? Well, the blood that's in Jesus' veins is royal blood, redeeming blood, hallelujah, royal, a ruling blood. Then the third fundamental is we believe in the blood atonement. And we'll get on Calvinists in a few weeks, but we believe the blood atonement was not limited. It was for the whole world. Who, <laughs> you said, why are you on that so much? Because that bunch of lunatics are going all over the world. Try, and you know, they're good at spreading their message because they don't do no soul winning and they don't do anything else. So they can package their little deal up because that's all they do. Right. Right. Amen. I want you to know something. If the blood is limited, it's only limited for one reason. And that is that you reject it. Number four. Now, no, for, for, so how many of y'all believe all three of those? Amen. Number four, we believe in the body resurrection and the return of Christ. Christ didn't come out of the tomb as a cast with the ghost. He came out bodily. Amen. One day, Jesus is going to come back, and we're bodily going to be taken out of here, and this body is going to be changed. Amen. Somebody help me preach. Number five, maybe I should have made this number one. We believe in the inerrancy of Scripture. Amen. This Bible is inspired. That means it's God-breathed. Yeah. This Bible is infallible. That means it's incapable of failing, and there's not one mistake in it. Amen. Time changes. Grass withers. Fire fadeth. But the Word of God yeah. abideth forever. Now, hold a minute. Now, let's take a church boat. How many of y'all on this section believe all five of those? 
How many in this section believe our Father? Over here? Over here? You know what you just voted on? You just said, I'm a fundamentalist. Not because we spank our kids or we voted Republican. It's what we believe. Amen. Am I preaching? It's, it's so ridiculous. It's almost got me ready to throw up. It's ridiculous what's going on today. Here's what's, and I don't, I don't want to upset any of my old-time church members that's done it the old way all the time. No, oh, man. If we use a screen to put up a hymn on the screen, that don't mean we went liberal. That just means we're using technology. And that is what, that is, that kills me. People say, if you change this and change that or a method, then you will have went liberal. No, you go liberal when you don't believe in the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the bodily resurrection, the blood atonement. Somebody help me preach. I got a feeling I'm going to be on TV this week. <laughs> Number three. Now, how am I doing? All right. All right, Jeff. So, am I running okay? We're independent, right? Self governed. We're fundamental because we believe in the five fundamentals. But we're Baptists. Come on now. I want all y'all to know this. We were never apart of the Reformation. By the way, many of the Reformers, the Puritans, who some of the Calvinists read after, killed our Baptist brother, along with the Universal Catholic Church. Boy, it's quiet in here now. Don't you die on me. But why are you a Baptist? I mean, they're taking it off. My God, they're taking it off the door. You know what we got now? This is weird. Can I ask you something? You're evangelist. I just want to give you a big question. You got one. Up on this rock, I'll build my, no, campus. <laughs> he didn't say up on this rock, I'll build my campus. Oh, we have a canvas church? No, he said, I pulled this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah. We have fun, yeah. Some of you are passing out at 7 o'clock. Now, get your pen out. Get your pen and a piece of paper. Do this quick, and I'm done. If you could spell, do this. Sp put, get a piece of paper and put down, I want you to put a cross stick right down your page. Spell Baptist. Now, don't be like this guy that went to a Bible church that came down here on one of our church fans. And I want to tell Valley Baptist Church on him, and he spelled it B-A-B-T-I-S-T. That told me he didn't even know what we are. B-A-P-T-I-S-T-S. -S. Now, this is why I'm a Baptist. Listen carefully. I'm finished. I'm a Baptist because we, and it's a Baptist distinction, we believe this Bible is the only authority for everything. For the church, for your marriage, for raising children, for parenting, for everything. This Bible is the final authority. A, we believe in the autonomy of the church. I already covered it, but the self-governing of the church. P, boy, I like this. We believe in the priesthood of the believer. I don't have to go to a priest to confess my sins. Jeremy, I am a priest. I am a king. And I can go to the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And as a priest, I can go right to him. Yeah. What is this? Whew. Hallelujah. T, y'all spell it? Two ordinances. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. 
And baptism is by immersion. It's not by sprinkling. It's not by dipping. It's immersion. Because you're showing the death, burial, and the resurrection. I, individual, soul liberty. See, the Calvinists said we don't have a right to choose, but really we do. We're individual people. And by the way, you'll choose to be saved or choose to be lost. And by the way, you'll choose on what church you'll go to. S, I'm almost done. The separation of church and state. I want to get this cross. Our founders wrote that in the document. But I want all y'all to hear this. That was not to keep your voice out of government. The church has all the right in the world to take a stand when politics crosses our path and when they're killing babies and promoting homosexuality and perversion and ungodliness, we better take a stand. When they've changed the gender lines. And right now, I want every one of you to put some pressure on Gov- Governor Justice. You need to put pressure on him. You say, what about? You know, in the House, they just voted a bill about boys and girls and athletics. There is some rumor that he might veto it. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. You need to get a hold of him. And you need to tell him there is a difference between boys and girls. And we ought not cross gender lines. Am I preaching? See, separation church and state doesn't mean we don't have a voice. It means the government shouldn't be in our business. Hello. Good preaching, Reverend. T, I'm almost done. Did I say that? Two offices, pastor and deacon. Number one, pastor, get this, pastor actually has three offices in one. Pastor, he feeds the flock. Bishop, he oversees the flock. Elder, he counsels the flock. That's my job. There's not three different of those. That's just one position. Then deacon. And then lastly, and I'll give an invitation on this one. Saved, regenerated church membership. By the way, we don't want lost people to be members of this church. Uh, You know, uh, people said, well, you better check that guy out where he's coming from. I'll tell you what I'm going to check on him about. I'm not going to try to go into his history in the past, what he'd done in that church in the past, because I ain't going to do that. What I'm going to do is watch him time to time he gets here, then I'll tell you. But I'll tell you what I will check him up on, or her up on, or the young man or young lady up on, whether they're saved or not. Because I don't want no lost church members. They sneak in enough. Now, hold a minute. Now, I'm going to ask y'all. Be honest with me. Did I say anything tonight was contrary to this book? And do you understand why I'm an independent? Because we're not self-governed. Fundamental, because we believe in the five fundamentals of the faith. Baptist, because of the, of the Baptist distinctives. Do you understand that? Amen. Then I've accomplished something. Remember something. I don't have I don't want to have the reputation of he's a legalist and mean, crude, rude, and a bully. If that's what a fundamentalist is, I don't want to have no part of it. But because they're like that doesn't mean we ought to change what we are. We just need to clean up our act. Am I preaching? Instead of, here's what's happening. Some of these little guys that can't take the heat, they're getting out of the kitchen. Whereas we got to be man enough and pastor enough to get our thumb out of our mouth and tell our people what the truth is. Now, I think I've been a pretty good educator tonight. At least two people say amen. Amen. Do you all know why we're independent, fundamental, Baptist now? If you know why we are, raise your hand so I, do, I know. 
Well, God bless you. I've got somewhere with you. And I'm going to give you some advice. If you're choosing a church, choose one that's closest to the Bible. But let me finish. The biggest question I want to end with is, are you saved? If you're a church member, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? I'm not talking about sign the church, a uh, little paper for the church. Now I'm talking about all you really say. Bow your head with me. I'm done. Lois, come to the piano. You know, somebody ought to just come and pray for our, pray for the pastors and our, that are independent fundamental Baptists that are under pressure tonight. You ought to just come around to all the pray. You ought to pray for your pastor tonight. We're in a battle. How many right now know you're saved? Raise your hand. Hold it. How many right now don't know for sure you're saved? Raise your hand. Say, I don't know. Those people come and pray. Uh, I'd like for about 20 of you to come and pray for me. Come and pray for the staff. Uh, we got a big job. Come pray for the deacons. Stand with me. Our Father, thank you for this good night. Thank you for the Word of God. I think I was clear. I hope I was. Holy Spirit, thank you for the liberty tonight. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen.